Community Connections CPMS Local sounds, thoughts, passions, and success Celebrate local Your neighbor's got a story to tell Community Connections Happy Monday, Waterloo Region. It is the 27th of June, 2022. You're listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman and got a special treat for you because in the studio today, we've got Woody Woodburn doing a live in-studio on-air performance. My soul is on fire tonight. This manifestation feels right I'm tired of pretending that you're not offending my life Resistance is futile, my friends Together we can conquer this Love is a potion to fix this emotional hell I won't cry no more You knock me off my feet again I won't cry no more Messing with my heart again Makes me a better man today. This hope is no longer a dream. Put your rest where your heart wants to be. When your level is higher, you lose a desire to scream. I won't cry no more Knock me off my feet again I won't cry no more Messing with my heart again But that makes me a better man today Get out of my way, get out of my way Get out of my way, get out of my way Get out of my way, get out of my way I'm just trying to find some peace So I can just be me I won't cry no more You knocked me off my feet again But I won't cry no more you're messing with my heart again, but that makes me a better man. Cause I won't cry no more. Knock me off my feet again, but I won't cry no more. You're messing with my heart again, but that makes me a better man. You're messing with my heart again. That makes me a better man today. Hmm. We seem to have a bit of an echo back here. <laughs> Welcome to the studio, Woody Woodburn. Thank you so much. Oh, well, we have to do something about that. Not quite sure what's going on. Um, tell me, how far did you drive to get here today? I drove about 45 minutes from Rockwood. Rockwood. That's, um, what, north of here? It is east. East. A little okay. north, a little north, yeah. Just on the other side of Guelph. What's the music scene like in Rockwood? Um, you know what? I, I very rarely play Rockwood, to be honest. But I moved there about um, six months ago. No, six years ago. And uh, I googled 
Rockwood Musicians. Mm -hmm. And the one that came up was... Um, Oh, I can't even think of his name right now. He's a good friend of mine, uh, Ian Reed. <laughs> Ian, who uh, has likely been played on your on your station. Ah. Uh, so now we, um, I reach out to him, and we become pretty good friends. And and uh, yeah, he's a he's a Rockwood original. He was born and raised. Okay. I was born and raised in Mississauga. Ah, okay. And, uh, I lived in Acton for a couple of years, and uh, that's where I met my wife. And then we bought in Rockwood. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So. If the music scene wasn't happening there before, it is now. <laughs> yeah, me and Ian are making it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what you were just playing just now? Better uh, Man. That is the title track from my first and only solo record. Mm -hmm. And Better Man Today is all about quitting my day job at the age of 44 to do music uh -huh. full time. And um, yeah, so I, I named the, the record that. I got my first tattoo is, oh. is Better Man Today in Gaelic. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, the, the, the first time something has meant that much to me to actually put it on my, yeah. on my arm, uh, just to ever imagine quitting my day job to do music full time was just, a, a pipe dream. And, and, uh, and here we are today. And it's worked out for you since then. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. I mean, um, it was right before COVID, uh, so it's been a little bit tough, but, yeah. um, I choose what I'm going to focus on, right? Positives yeah. or negatives. And, and I trust the universe and that what leads me here to, yeah. to be with you today, really. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but two years ago that, uh, you first got in contact and I invited you into the studio and COVID happened and everything shut oh, down right. for yes. us. Yeah. 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 So I'm glad you finally made it in here. Yeah, me too. Glad the studio's back open again. Yeah. Uh, you're the first live in studio performance Amazing. we've had since, since, um, we've opened the studio back up again. Yeah. So, um, awesome. Yeah. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Better Man Today has, what, six tracks on it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, been playing that for a couple of years now. Amazing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's uh, always good to have local community artists playing on, the, on community radio. Sure. Yeah. So glad to have that. Where, where did that music come from? Is that something you specifically wrote after you decided to go full time? Um, the, 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 the ideas for the songs were... were we're coming uh, during the process of making that decision to, to leave my day job. And uh, so most of the songs are about that, um, the process of um, changing the mindset to be able to do this full time. Mm -hmm. um, we rented a cottage. Um, I co-write with uh, two of my best friends, their brothers, Matt and Chris Gormley. Mm -hmm. Chris is the drummer of The Trues. And um, so I rented a cottage in, in Bancroft, Ontario uh, in May of 2019. And uh, we wrote six songs in three days, and that became the record. Wow. Yep. So. Six songs in three days. Yep. Most people would spend days crafting over, you know, the music, the lyrics, mm -hmm. um, orchestration. Is there orchestration, or do you uh, mm, write strictly for guitar? It's uh, strictly for guitar. And... Um, that the team we have, Chris and Matt and myself, is just to me, it's just like a dream team. Like, if I was writing on my own, it would take weeks or months. Yeah. Or, but um, they know me um, as good or better than I know myself musically. They're they're they both have a degree in music, and ah. and I don't, I don't even read music. Oh, really? So, the the combination of the three of us works really well. Chris is a drummer and amazing lyricist. He plays. Sometimes he'll write on ukulele, which is which is cool. We never have ukulele on my records, but it's but a cool yeah. a writing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a cool writing tool though. And Matt knows the guitar inside and out, and okay. he knows exactly what chords we could play when we need them. And okay. and so the three of us together is just like a dream team. And then our producer is Carl Jennings um, from Hamilton. And uh, he's, his, his band is called Freedom Train. Um, and the four of us together is like, I just can't imagine it being any, any better. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. Is that your touring band as well? When they're available, yes. 95% of the time I'm solo. So oh, okay. depending on the shows, uh, my producer could be my, my bass player. Yeah. Um, and then Chris would be my drummer and Matt would be the guitar player. Um, but it's hard to get all of us together in the same room at one yeah. time, right? Is that just logistics with your schedules, or is that yeah. Um, yeah. the gigs aren't available for four-piece groups? A little bit of both, I guess. Like, um, 
COVID played a factor in that, but they weren't that busy through COVID. And I was organizing drive-in concerts that were allowed to happen through hmm. COVID. So um, I always say that, that we had a five-piece band. Um, that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for COVID because cause of our availability. Right. So Everybody's available because all the indoor gigs are gone. Exactly. So a, a drive-in concert, you get people to go where and, and do what? Um, so I partnered with uh, two friends of mine. Um, one is based, uh, he lives here in Kitchener, I believe. Uh, or Cambridge, uh, he has a company called EJSE. And when I need a sound guy, he's my sound guy. So okay. he's my production guy. So I partnered with him. And I also have a, another friend of mine, Anthony Andrews from Acton. Mm -hmm. uh, his business is based out of Milton. Uh, his business is Party Cinema. So um, a lot of what he does is outdoor movies, pop-up, like inflatable screen movies. So, And oh. I do some work on the side with him. So we were doing a lot of drive-in movies pop-up drive-in movies through COVID. So I was putting two, to, two, two and two together. I need to reinvent myself as a musician right now. So we all teamed up and right. um, we got, uh, we did three different cities, Georgetown, Alora, and Shelburne. Uh, no, we didn't make Shelburne happen. Georgetown and Alora. And um, we had Jim Cuddy headline all three. Okay. So um, it was pretty amazing to have uh, we did do Shelburne. Uh, actually, Mansfield was the was the town, and that's where Sohaila Smith uh, ah. opened for us. And yeah. it's funny. I walked in the studio today, and <laughs> and Bob was was playing the, the the station live, and it was a, a pre recorded interview with Sohaila Smith, uh -huh. and she was talking about me. Yeah, was musicians FAQ with Steve Todd and uh, interviewing Sohaila. You're right. Um, so, um, yeah. So I always look for local artists that. Um, would appreciate having the opportunity to to play on a stage like that with Jim Cuddy yeah. and and I found her and and uh, we started chatting and uh, I just love her vibe and and um so yeah we had three very successful drive-in concerts excellent and um it was like surreal to be able to do that again probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for covid yeah. um so um you know that was just my way of reinventing myself and and it continued to work and Continuing to work, that's a big thing, isn't and, it? And it was an amazing yeah. experience. Do you do any of the um, online concerts? A lot of musicians have gone online to perform. I did, yes, um, and that was pretty successful. Um, to be honest, my wife and I uh, do Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with COVID, all the Weight Watchers uh, workshops went to Zoom. Yeah. And at that point, you could go Zooming anywhere around Canada. So we were meeting people all around Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this became really cool for my music career. We'd be on a workshop and someone would be, oh, hey, Woody, uh, we hear you're a singer. Can you play us a song? So I started playing on these WW, they call it, Weight Watchers yeah. is WW, okay, yeah. on these Zoom workshops. And so my fan base was just flourishing through that. Yeah. And I just played a show last night in Uxbridge where there was 56 people there that were that I've all met through Zoom, um, Zoom workshops yeah. in, in some uh, some sh shape or form. So, um, so yeah, so I did start doing um, online concerts, and it was pretty overwhelming the the feedback and and the support I was getting from across Canada. So again, that wouldn't have happened without COVID. So, you know, that's that's been my theme: like just focus on positives, trust the universe. Yeah. And the universe will will support you yeah. if you trust it, and and it has through COVID. So I've been pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. And now, in um, venue, uh, venues are picking up again, yeah. letting you uh, perform live in front of a, a live audience. Mm -hmm. um, how has has how's that different from doing it on Zoom? From doing it uh, as a drive-in concert? Um, yeah, there's there's. There's no comparison. Like online is nice in, in the moment when the, when we can't play live, but mm -hmm. there's no comparison to playing with people in front of you and, and feeling that vibe and the connection. Yeah. And there's there's no comparison. So um, I I haven't done an online concert in a long time. For one, I'm too busy. Two, other people are busy now. Okay. They're not right. sitting at home, locked at home. Right. Right. And. Um, and just the connection isn't there that that I'm looking for when I'm playing. So, um, right. it's good in the moment if if if, if need be. Yeah, so, yeah. And are, are are is there overlap between your live audience and uh, your Zoom audience? 
You see, you, will you see some of the same faces? Yes, which is really cool. It's kind of weird okay. because it's like I see them for the first time in person. Like last night, yeah. I was seeing f- them for the first time in person. <laughs> you know, there's some. There was somebody from Winnipeg. There was somebody from Montreal. Whoa! And they were all in town for a different event, but we coordinated ah. coordinated my event around that. But for a second there, I thought you had such a, a rabid fan base. You were traveling across the country to come <laughs> see you. I'd like to think that. <laughs> um, It'll happen. But, um, you know, seeing them in person for the first time is weird because you feel like you already know them yeah. from Zoom. And it's, uh, it's very weird. Um, but it's cool. Yeah. 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 It's cool to see them come to see me and, and, and support me. Yeah. So. There are some upcoming gigs in the area. Yes. I'm playing Kitchener for the first time maybe in 20 years. And, and the fu- funny thing is I have two gigs Back to back Friday Saturday, uh-huh. in, both in Kitchener, the yeah. uh, Rich Uncle Tavern on Friday July first, yeah. and uh, that's up by King and, and Queen Street. Yep, yeah. and then July second, I am at the Falls Road Pub. Yep. Okay, Where, where's that Falls Road Pub? Oh, Falls asking. Road probably. Yes, that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's about as much as I know. To be honest, I've never been. Okay. Um, I just had a connection through a friend, and I shall do a bit of online searching and put that on our um, our show notes page awesome. with a, a map link, so people can come find you. Thank you. Yeah. You've got a couple of new songs as well. Yes. Um, I got this from you probably in January or so, and yeah. uh, the um, the metadata in the file that I got was uh, "Am I enough?" with a question mark on the end. Yeah. So that's how I stuck it in uh, in the digital library. That's how I announced it on uh, the show when I first played it. And you're not uh, the only one. Yeah, it was my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so it's "I am enough." Yeah, I changed it at the last moment, but I didn't know enough that I have yeah. to go deeper into the metadata and yeah. change it. I like to think I, I got such a uh, a leading uh, pre-release copy that you know it, it hadn't been finalized by the exactly. time you got it on the air. There so. you go. Maybe yeah. it's worth more. As, as am oh, I? Yeah. Enough? We've got a collector's item here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, so yeah, that that's a, a, a really important song to me. Um, I watched, it, and this is one of the only ones I pretty much wrote on my own. Um, and I watched a movie, a Disney movie called Soul, and um, I'm not. I'm not typically into cartoons, but this this movie really affected me. And um, I watched it with my wife, and she went to bed, and I opened a bottle of red wine. And by the by the time the red wine was done, the song was done. And uh, it's um, basically about that transition of feeling, for most of my music career and life, not feeling good enough or not feeling enough. Mm-hmm. And, you know, making that jump to do music full-time, you have to change that mindset pretty quickly so um, it's about that transition and training myself to think that I am enough or or I am good enough and that's where the the theme from the song came from right that's coming out on a collection at some point an EP yes Um, so I have we just finished four new songs in the studio one of which was released on Father's Day Uh, and two of those have been submitted to factor um, the Canadian music grant and I'm waiting for the results of that before I can release an EP. So we're probably oh. looking at um, October, November um, okay. to, to put together, I think, a seven-song EP. That's uh, an administrative wrinkle I hadn't heard of before. Yeah, I, I, I'm not actually sure, to be honest, if we have to wait till the results. But at the submission process, they have to be unreleased. Okay. Yeah. So, so the fact that we're playing it on the air, does that still... That one was not submitted to Factor. Well, that one wasn't. Right. Oh, okay. But other songs that you're planning on putting on the same EP will be? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, okay. Yeah, so hopefully I can get it out by November, and, and uh, I'm just so busy right now that I think I need a month off in October and re- reset and uh, start planning the EP release. Yeah. That's the plan, yeah. That's, that's the part of running a business uh, interferes with playing the music, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, just got to make hay while the sunshine sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Can I put you on the spot? Can you play uh, I Am Enough? Sure. Definitely, I'd love to. All right. Woody Woodburn, a single release from January or so, I Am Enough. If you could see life in the blink of an eye Would you see it more for than it is to sign? Life, is it more than beats the eye? Is it deeper than we could ever realize? 
How could I never think that I should cry? What did I think I would do before I die? Was anyone ever really on my side? Do what I think ever coincide? Am I? Oh, am I? Am I? Oh, am I enough? Am I enough? If I could see life through my grandmother's eyes would I know the fans peace and love if we all try? When death becomes sudden and time is not on your side. Did life have a purpose and did you go for a ride? Am I? Oh, am I? Who am I enough? Am I enough? Oh, crazy thing about life we know. Though we try and we cry Wiping the tears from our eyes In between all the thoughts in our minds Am I? Oh, am I? Am I? Oh, am I? I really like how that ends, because it's a question all the way through, and then the very last sentence is, I am enough. You've determined that yeah. it was. Yeah, and that was the hesitation with what to name the song, right? Yeah. And, uh, but I think I am enough, like you say, is the most important part of that song. Yeah. That's the point of the song. I've made that transition, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So you said you don't read music. Right. So how do you transfer the music that you've composed to other musicians to play with you or to, to play on their own? Um, typically, you know, I'm playing with my friends that are fluent in music and I basically play them my part mm -hmm. and they, they basically write their own part. Um, and and I, let, I give them the freedom to do that because okay. I think the, the, the songs will benefit from them having a creative uh, input on the song. Right. So that's basically the way it goes. Yeah. There's nothing, you know, half the time, I hate to say it, but half the time I don't even know what key I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I can guess. The first, yeah. the first chord is G. That's, right, <laughs> you know, right. um, and that's, you know what, I've learned how to read music twice in my life. I was in school for audio engineering and there was a, a class in that. Um, but if it doesn't, translate to my writing um, or if I don't use it typically it, it, it you lose it I lose yeah. it and um, and that's just not I don't have a passion for that I have a passion for singing and, and right. writing music and the passion is not the the 
theory the mechanics of the, of the music right yeah and i think songs can benefit from that sometimes right you're you're writing what feels good or sounds good it's nice to have someone there that can tell you no that doesn't work or this might work but yeah. for me i like having that aspect of it too just something that feels good when right? you were recording did you have um a, an engineer like a, a music uh, production um producer Right, yeah, that's Carl Jennings. That's Carl who's, who's yeah. doing that, okay. Westmoreland Studios in... Uh, so more than Hamilton. just being a recording engineer, he was also directing you on playing technique and, uh, and things like that. Yes, yeah, he yeah. drills me through the vocals, vocal takes, which okay. is amazing. He's an amazing... He's the best singer I know, probably. Oh. Uh, an amazing bass player, and he plays bass on a lot of my okay. songs, and he'll sing back up, and uh, so yeah, he's an, an amazing engineer, amazing producer and uh, just an amazing guy to have on my team yeah yeah uh, absolutely great yeah. so you're doing um, a couple of shows this coming weekend uh, yep and will that be just you solo yes yep I have a show in Hamilton July 8th it'll be a trio which is with okay. Matt and Chris Gormley okay. uh, at Stonewalls in Hamilton um, otherwise I think everything I have booked is solo yeah okay until the EP, then I'll have an EP release party where I'll have a four or five piece band. And you're doing everything, right? You were telling me that uh, we were originally on to schedule this for Friday afternoon, and you're busy. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. It's. I'm going flat out right now. Um, it's kind of funny. I was coming out of COVID restrictions. All my Fridays and Saturdays were getting booked up quickly. Yeah. Um, but I need something more to pay the bills, right? So I have a couple of other things that I do. I started playing nursing homes, which is very rewarding. Yeah. Um, and the the movie company company that I mentioned, I do, I'm do. i an AV tech as well. Right. And so I started booking those events. And then as things restrictions open up more, I have more gigs coming in. So sometimes I'm six or seven events a week and... Um, um, you know, it, I do get burnt out, but I'll never complain because, you know, I could yeah. be sitting at an office job doing something un very unfulfilling, yeah. and uh, I just feel pretty grateful to be able to do it. So, so a little cartoon uh, just the other day, you know, um, a, a sad, dark skull uh, saying, you know, uh, doing the thing you do at work, and then a, a bright, happy uh, fellow uh, below, you know, spending uh, the entire night doing it, the same thing, but for yourself. Yeah, exactly. It makes a, a big difference when you're doing it on your own for yourself yeah. and, and not for somebody else to their specifications. Yeah, so there was a point where I was doing the day job Monday to Friday, just inside sales, office job, and uh, music on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, but to be honest, there was a point where, you know, on a Friday night, the last thing I wanted to do was drive to Toronto to play music. Yeah. And I was just there for the paycheck, and that was it was getting kind of depressing. Like, I, I wasn't getting anything out of my music. Um, and I was dealing with um, a spiritual advisor at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, he's local here too, uh, Russell Scott. He's a singer-songwriter. He might be on your station too, yeah. too as well. So, um, so there was a point where I had decided I was going to quit music. And that kind of scared me for about a week. I was like... This is kind of scary, but I think it's the right thing to do. I, I need to focus on paying the bills and, um, you know, retirement. And then um, Russell Scott asked me, do you think he could take three months off work to write music? And I'm like, no friggin' way. That I have a mortgage to pay, and I can't take time off for music. And then within the, the next month or two, with a, a number of sessions with Russell um, um, and you know, working through this with my wife as well, I had helped her start her business and um, she started pushing me to do this full time and she was more of a supporter oh, of it yeah. than I was and, and it's very difficult. It, you know, if I didn't have that support from my wife, I, I wouldn't be standing here no. today. So I probably would have quit music and uh, to have her pushing me was, was huge and she supports everything I do. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and then, you know, I, I started that transition of thinking, maybe maybe I should try this. And maybe if I trust the universe and I, you know, just focus yeah. on positives and do life honestly and, and and just expect that the universe will have something good for me. And, and that's yeah. what, what's happened. And it was just to get to that point of thinking, I think it's time to quit music was kind of depressing. And then, you know, if I was yeah. to die tomorrow and... 
I had quit music or I never tried this, uh, you know. That would have been a, a, a loss for you. Exactly. Loss for all of us, really. Right. Yeah. And, and some of my lyrics pertain to that, too. Yeah. So thankfully, I'm, I'm here and doing well. And yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. It's great that you've got all the support from uh, your wife, uh, your family. Because I, I see that a, a fair bit going out to concert venues. Uh, you know, you've got one artist on stage and the spouse sitting there doing the merch sales. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. That's the way it is nowadays, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to be your own record label sometimes too, right? Yeah, yeah. Is so there um, Woody Woodburn merchandise? There is, yeah. Oh. So if you go to my uh, website, I have it at some of my shows, but uh, if you go to woodywoodburn.ca... Um, There'll be a link to my merch site, which is called WoodyHoodie.net. Um, there's a number of different things, uh, including one section is uh, is um, my music merch, uh, t-shirts, and yeah. So there there's there's a lot. See, so that one you're looking at there. Um, this is at um, woody-hoodie.myshopify.com. Yeah, or WoodyHoodie.net will get you there too. Okay. So uh, the the idea. But, behind starting that website was um, I wanted to get my uncle's artwork out there. And so that that VW van, I believe it was, uh, is my, that's my uncle's artwork. So I wanted to support him and get his artwork out there. Um, and then with the WW community, um, I started creating positivity um, logos and sayings and, uh, and it works well with having my music merch on there. So, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Is that a significant part of your revenue stream, or is it mostly doing the gigs? Uh, it, it's a very small part of it. Uh, the gigs are what's what's paying the right. bills right now. So right. yeah, yep. I don't. I always have. It, it, it's it's probably an insecurity thing, and and maybe I'm giving off this vibe, but I, you know, I have that mentality that why would somebody want my name on their shirt? <laughs> right. I have to get past that, but yeah, I'm oh. probably giving that vibe out. You don't want this shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, you want the shirt. You know? <laughs> yeah. I know, you know, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I can say, I, I think you would enjoy my music, but not at right. the point of selling shirts. So, okay. WoodyWoodburn.ca, get your merch there. Yes. And uh, how about streaming? Are you streaming um, your songs as well? Yep. And anywhere you can get um, music online, um, Spotify, Apple yeah. Music. and Spot band, SoundClouds. I don't even things. know where it all is. I, yeah. I send it to CD Baby and they... And they do that for us. So. Oh, really? They, they did the distribution? Yep. Well, that's interesting. I yep. didn't realize that. Uh, I thought they were their own distributor. They were own, their own channel. No. Nope. didn't realize that they spread it out to uh, some of the other places. Oh, they do digital yeah. distribution to, you know, TikTok, um, Instagram. So when really? you want to do an Instagram story, you can pull up one of my songs and yeah. add my music to it. So, And they do all that for you. Okay, so you're licensing your music for others to use in their social media. Yes. Now, that is really cool. Yeah. And that's just part of the package. That's just, uh, I would think most people do that nowadays, yeah. Okay, I, I, I hear it two different ways. I hear people who want nothing like that at all. They don't want their music to be used by anybody else because, right. you know, it's, it's their intellectual property. And there's it's, others who and say, I see that too. you know, take the music, listen to it, download it, stream it, uh, take it for free because the distribution cost is negligible right. and it really adds marketing value to... Uh, to the music, and then you get the the scarce resources, which is your personal appearances and maybe some merch. Yeah, exactly, and and that's my mentality that I need to take advantage of this streaming technology, mm -hmm. right? I could I could look at it as a negative that people are using and listening to my music free, or I could uh, look at it that I'm getting my music heard by more yeah. people than ever possible before. Yeah. So uh, I think somebody at my stage has to look at it as an advantage yeah. uh, 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 despite all the downsides yeah. well i really don't think there are any you know and um, everybody that i know of who's released their um artistic intellectual property music books um software even um haven't suffered for it they they tend to do better having released it than trying to chase down the miscreants who've downloaded it illegally yeah. So if there are no illegal downloads, if the downloads are all legitimate, you know, you're generating goodwill in the community and you're spreading, you know, the Woody Woodburn music. I agree, yeah. And that's the mentality I want to have, right? I'm spreading, like a friend of mine um, always uses the term spreading joy, spreading love. Yeah. So if you have that mentality, 
um, I think the universe will give it back to you. And yeah. That's the way I always try to do it. Right? It's like and, it's doing it to you right now. Yeah, yeah, and like last night, you know, two people bought my CD. And I always pitch it like, oh, you probably don't even have a CD player. <laughs> um, but last night, they, were, they wanted to support, right? They probably already have my music on Spotify or Apple Music, uh, but they wanted to support. So that's the way I have to look at it. You know, they want to support when they do buy a CD. Yeah. Even though they don't have to, they might just use it as a coaster. But yeah, yeah. but it's 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 the patronage there, right? They've yeah. they've paid for something, and so that's a little slice of revenue to you. Exactly. Uh, better than just you know listening in your basement at home. Yeah. You know, go out, see the artist. You know, put down your. Uh, it used to be two bucks for a beer when uh, when I was going out bar hopping, but yeah. you know, that shows you. <laughs> You know, where I earned my gray hair. And now we're looking at 10 uh, or $12, uh, depending probably. on where you're at. But do that, uh, because that's what ends up paying the artist. You know, the venue will pay the artist based yeah. on how much uh, food and drink that they can sell to the audience. So, exactly, yes. So go listen, go eat, go drink. Yep. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of support for that coming out of COVID. People are dying to get out and support um, at some of the venues I play. And so we have to take advantage of that. Yeah. So... Got something else for us? Sure. Um, uh, my brand new song, I think, uh, would be a good idea to play. Okay. Um, I wrote it for my dad. Yeah. Um, he's not well. Uh, he's doing a little better. But he has um, stage four cancer and, and dementia. Uh, and, and the really cool thing about my dad and my parents in general was um, they didn't really appreciate my music for before. They didn't understand because it wasn't paying the bills. So they didn't... Yeah. Um, but now at this stage, they're my biggest fans, and my dad listens to my music every day. Uh, his favorite things to do is watch the Leafs and, and listen to my music. So um, that means a lot to me to have their support in what I'm doing. I was scared to tell them I was leaving my day job. And um, so I wrote a song called Dad, and I released it on Father's Day. And, and I had a gig that day on a patio, and he was able to come. And, ah, and that okay. was the first time he heard the song. And so... It's, that is cool. Yep, it's an important song to me. It'll be on the EP as well. Okay. And it's, uh, it's out on Spotify and Apple Music and it's YouTube. There's a video. My cousin Clarence Poirier um, put together a, a video as well that's on yeah. my YouTube channel. We've got it in our library, so we've been playing it too. Amazing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So this is Dad by Woody Woodburn. Can I sit you down, maybe pour a drink? Is it time to talk? Is it time to think? We can watch the game, should we make amends? Can we act like we are friends? I can write it down or I can scream it out. Should I hold your hand? Don't leave me in this doubt. We never mentioned love, you never brought it up. Did I not do enough? We all grow old, old. I don't want to let you go. Now we've come this far, let's pour another drink While the game's still on, we have our hearts in sync If that's all we gotta say, we run with it A bomb that never quits We all go, whoa, whoa I don't wanna let this go You holding your hand so tight Wanna hear you say I love you Even though I always knew Dad We know we gotta come in Dad I wanna talk about something Dad 
Let's talk about something dead. We're going to talk about something dead. I love you, Dad. Perfect song for Father's Day. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one for me to get through. Yeah. Especially with him sta- sitting there in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. So biggest fan and biggest critic? He's not. Like, he's just, everything is very positive about my music. He doesn't say anything negative. Um, yeah, he's, he's my biggest fan for sure. He wears, he wears my shirt. And, ah. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, it's pretty nice to have that support now. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. Does, um, do, do you, when you're touring, do you um, sing that? as you know, a finale or a, how does that fit into your repertoire? Depends on the vibe. Um, it could be a finale. It could be the last song of a set. Um, you know, um, it depends. You know, different crowds are there to socialize and some are there to hear my story. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's a good one to open with to get their attention. Really? So it, it just depends on the vibe. Sometimes it's a party vibe and... Um, I think it is a good finale because they're partying for most of the night. So, it uh, you know I, I'll fit it in wherever okay. I feel the need on any given night. How do you get that feedback from the audience? Um, you know, uh, could be you know just clapping, people coming up and, and talking to me. Um, you know, um, you know sometimes if I I could play Better Man today, my biggest song, and not one person is clapping so i'm Mm. like okay it's going to be one of those nights right so um you know i can tell if people are paying attention right i I love seeing someone that might have their back to me and then they turn right around and and they're like whoa this is really good and and they're into the message and they're into the story and i'm like okay i have that person now and sometimes it only you only need that one person to to feel that connection right you've got somebody to play too yeah. yeah, and then I think I think I'm presenting it better now because I have somebody giving me some good feedback. So, yeah. but again, it's different at every every show. Every every venue is different. I've been really like last night. I played a cidery, a beautiful mm-hmm. cidery in Uxbridge called Slab Town, and it's becoming a, an amazing venue in itself. And just the vibe there is just everyone is just there enjoying themselves and um, the weather. It was outdoors. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, a lot of those WW people were there, and they love my hearing my story and, and my music. So, yeah. 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 And if the audience doesn't grab you, if, if they're just tuned out, how do you how do you deal with that? I, I just have this mentality that something something amazing is going to happen. Yeah. And instead of having that perception before, where where I said I didn't want to go to Toronto and play music on a Friday night because I just worked. Yeah, an unfulfilling job um, Monday to Friday. Now I go into it thinking something is am- amazing is going to happen, even though, even though it's not particularly the best venue or the best vibe. I'm going to get somebody's attention and maybe change, change somebody's mindset about something. And when I put that out there, I think the, met- the music comes across better. Um, it's more meaningful. I'm not just playing it just to get it over with them. I'm, I'm presenting it in a way that I want somebody to hear it. I've, I've seen that happen too, you know, the, the, the performer is completely disengaged from, from the environment, from the venue, from the audience, even from, from his own music. Yeah, and, yeah, and my mentality would have been when I was in that boat is to blame it on them. Mm. And, and that's a vicious circle to get into. Um, and that's why I wanted to quit. I was, it wasn't fulfilling. I was like, they don't, want, they don't care what I'm doing. Yeah. But, but then come to realize they, they don't care because I don't care. Right. If I'm going to tell them, I'm basically telling them, you're going to care about this. One way or the other, you are going to care about Creating this. your own feedback to yeah. you know, instill that into the audience. That's, and, that's good. And that's the way I have to do it every show. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, it, it's working. So. Yeah. so all the people that I've, uh, I've talked to say that, when they come into a venue, the, um, the people there want to hear cover songs. They don't want to hear you know, Woody Woodburn originals. They want to hear the Beatles, the Stones. Mm-hmm. You know, um, does that happen to you? Do you get that? For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of the times that's what I'm hired to do. Um, oh. 
um, the, for those for those gigs that are paying the bills, paying the mortgage. I you know I have to play music that they know, but I'm playing. You know, I would like to say five or six of my own throughout the night, and um, and you know sometimes you're trying to get your get their attention by playing songs they know, and then throw in your own, or vice versa. You mm -hmm. want to get their attention by telling them a story about one of your songs. About you know sometimes in, in one of those venues where people want to hear songs they know, I tell the story that I quit my day job at the age of 44, and here's my song that I wrote about it. Mm -hmm. uh, usually that gets their attention. So. Um, it's always different. Um, I don't blame people for wanting to hear music that they know. Um, the majority of them, I have my own spin on them. It might be a rock song, but I'm making it a folk song. Um, I'm making it into my own. So, and that's what's fulfilling for me. Yeah. When I'm playing other people's music, I'm not just hammering out um, a party song. Right. In, in your own music, is there a progression? Is there a, an order of events, like an order of, of songs? Uh, is, is Better Man Today, is that a concept album? Uh, theoretically, yes, it, it, it's all about that transition in life and, and the, the important things in life. Um, you know, changing my mindset to be a positive mindset also had to, I also had to focus and put attention on what is important in my life. So I'm an only child, but I have 36 cousins on my mom's side ah. of the family from Cape Breton. So, um, I had to revisit that, that. Like, I'm an only child, but um, I have 36 first cousins that half of us are musicians. And, and you know, that has to become one of the important things in my life. Right. Right. And, uh, and so that's what I wanted to write about, the important things in life. And, right. you know, that's my song, Family and Me. And uh, so there is a theme. It's that mindset transition. Yeah. Does definitely. It go out of your own experiences and, and encompassing... The experiences of other people as well. Obviously, I haven't listened to enough lyrics. So. Yeah, yeah um, I think it's mostly from within. Uh, there's one song that's kind of a more of a party song that we wrote about that trip to the to the cottage where we wrote mm -hmm. all the songs. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's still a meaningful song uh, in that um, it's about that trip, and that yeah. trip itself was an amazing experience. It, it's getting those feelings ab about my new mindset. Uh, out in right. music so uh, so it's still a meaningful song um, it fits the narrative it, of, of the Woody Woodburn life fits. experience it does sound like a party song we're talking about booze yeah. and, uh -huh. and drinking but it, it's about that meaningful trip because that was a big part of the transition Being, I wanted to get the three of us out of our everyday work life mm -hmm. and sit down in a cottage for days and and get the, these feelings out because sometimes you're writing you're squeezing in an hour or two here or there and sometimes you're not in the right mindset um so that was really important uh for me another thing was like you you won't hear me writing love songs but there is a love song on there but it was a love song to myself is the way i i look at it somebody else can take it a different way uh that is called life and and yeah. um but it was a love song to myself because I never thought that loving myself was a thing. Yeah. It was just, well, I don't know. You've accepted yourself. You're loving what you do. You're loving your life. Exactly. You've accepted, you know, the whole new lifestyle of, of being a, a full-time musician. Yep. You've got to love that. Yep. And, you know, who else is going to be there for me, you know, other than myself? Who, yeah. who better to be there for myself is myself. Yeah. And that's what that song is about. Yeah. So, so, yeah, there is a theme to all of, all of the songs. Yep. Yeah. So we teased the audience with um, the party song. Yes. What's it called? It is called Bottle of Rum. Bottle of Rum. Oh, yes. I, I've played that. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there was no rum that weekend. There was many other things, but not rum, but rum just kind of suits it. Yeah. So... The year was cold in 2019, so we headed not too far. Our dreams we were running for life, and its misery ended up in a cabin by the sea. Wine got drunk, songs got sung, we laughed so hard, little bells got rung, and we ain't going home until the beer's all done, or until we see the bottom of a bottle of rum.
The days flew by and the nights came quick. We drank so much that our bellies got sick. But you can solve any problem no matter how thick. Living life out in the sticks. Wine got drunk, songs got sung. We laughed so hard, little bells got rung. And we ain't going home until the beer's all done. Don't wait till we see the bottom of a bottle of rum. We threw some cards and we let ourselves bake. We were dealing with love in a little heartache. But there's no time for that when your life's at stake. Up with the boys on Podash Lake. Wine got drunk, songs got sung. We laughed so hard, little bells got rung. And we ain't going home until the beer's all done. No until we see the bottom of a bottle of rum. The year was cold in 2019, so we headed not to follow our dreams. We were running for life and its misery, ended up in a cabin by the sea. Wine got drunk, songs got sung, left so hard, little bells got rung. And we ain't going home until the beer's all done, or until we see the bottom of a bottle of rum. Wine got drunk, songs got sung, we laughed so hard, little bells got rung. And we ain't going home until the beer's all done. No until we see the bottom of a bottle of rum. That is great. It's Thank you. falls entirely out of you know the, the atmosphere of, of the rest of the Woody Woodburn repertoire, the yeah. Woody Woodburn songbook. Yeah. And it's something that sounds traditional, you know. You yeah. said Cape Breton. This sure sounds like a, a Cape Breton and traditional song. And that's the vibe. And the kind of cool thing is, um, you know, my mom is from Cape Breton. I spent every summer of my life in Cape Breton for two weeks. And, but I never, and I love East Coast music. Um, it, it's in my blood, in my bones. Um, but I never play it. It's never been my thing. Um, but it does come out when I write. So yeah. um, it's funny. I, I, I was just in Cape Breton in March and a few weeks ago touring. And... Uh, when I play here, people will say to me, oh, are you from the East Coast? Because they feel it in my music. Mm -hmm. And when I'm out there, they're like, you're not from around here. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so funny. But yeah. here they, they, they feel and hear the East Coast in it, but not there. Yeah. It's funny. Well, that, that certainly does have it. Yep. Uh, a nice vigorous song. I see you broke a guitar string in the middle of that. I did, yeah. yeah. This, the weather does not help the humidity. But, uh, yeah. yep. Does it happen on stage a lot? Breaking guitar strings. Lately, and, yeah, with the with the um, with the weather, with the humidity, and going in and out of air conditioning, oh, and yeah. uh, my guitar does need some work. I'm playing so much now. I don't. Sometimes I don't think about it. But the more you play, the more your guitar needs yeah. work. My guitar guy is here in town, so I messaged him ah, today to see if I can okay. go see him. He works at Folkway Music. Folkway Music. Yeah. Folkway Music does the Woody Woodburn guitar. Yeah, exactly. What's your music room like? What kind of uh, stuff do you have in your music room? That's not a very good question right now. Oh. <laughs> my music room is my living room, ah. basically. Um, you know, I used to, I used to have a studio, and I went for went to school for audio engineering. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I um, couldn't keep up with the technology, um, and yeah. so I don't have a way to record other than my iPhone right now. Uh, but I have my guitar on the wall. Uh, my wife plays a little bit of ukulele, so we have a ukulele on the wall. We have a right. uh, an upright piano, but I don't play that too much. The plan was to learn piano. And yeah. I had one piano lesson, and then COVID hit, and oh, I haven't had a okay. lesson since. Um, so, yeah, I mean, our basement is a, is a salon, so there's no room down there. We One of our spare rooms is a gym. There's oh, no man. room there. <laughs> and uh, so you can see who the who wears the pants in our house. And uh -huh. Yeah. But um, I'll have a I'll I'll be up and running with a studio uh, soon. It's just not a priority at the moment. Yeah, an at-home studio, or will you go yeah. out and rent a spot? Um, I I I would really like it to be in my in my house, so okay. I can you know don't have to book. Go in there at three in the morning and exactly yeah. Yeah. when yeah. I'm wide awake because I just had a coffee <laughs> a few hours ago, like last night. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you said you've you've had a piano lesson. One. One piano lesson. Yeah. And does that help you at all? Does that the plan was um, I would love to be able to write on piano just for like a different avenue. Okay. Um, I think the piano, there's a lot of benefits to writing on piano. 
that I have not benefited from, obviously. Um, so right now it's all, you're doing the composing on guitar? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, my piano teacher actually is a friend of mine, another local here, um, Andrea LeBlanc. They have their own, um, her and her fiance have their own uh, Facebook live show called I Am, um, they are called My Living Room Live. Every Pretty much okay. every Wednesday night, My Living Room Live on Facebook. I'm a, I'm, I'm a guest on their show a lot. And, uh, okay. and she's a local uh, piano teacher, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, we'll put that on the uh, on the show notes picture. In fact, boy, uh, we're running out of time. Yeah. So, um, can you run down what your schedule is for the next couple of days, couple of weeks? Um, well, uh, the easiest one is the the month of August. My wife are, and I are going to be in Nova Scotia for the whole month, oh. which I've never done that before. I have fifteen shows booked. Fifteen shows in out there. Yeah. Wow. And normally, I go for two weeks, and I'm doing. About nine shows yeah. in two weeks out there, and with the price of gas, it's not easy to no. make money. Um, and then September, I'm going to do that trip again, but this time I'm going to go to Newfoundland. I've never been, never been to Newfoundland, so the travel opportunities for being a full time musician are sound wonderful. It is very nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard to make a lot of money with the price of gas, but it's more about the experience, yeah. um, and you know, maybe making a name for myself out there too. I'm, I'm getting some radio play and people coming to see me yeah. so so yeah i'm um july 1st rich uncle tavern uh in kitchener mm -hmm. uh, falls road pub in kitchener on july 2nd as well that afternoon i'm playing badlands brewing in caledon and then i have stonewalls in hamilton which you spoke of where i'm yeah. doing the trio yeah and that's the next couple of weeks. Um, I play at the Pump House in Port Credit, Collingwood Brewery um, in Collingwood on July 16. And, yeah, that's about the next few weeks. There's a Halliburton Highlands Brewing. I love the breweries, as you can see, <laughs> July uh, 22nd and 23rd. Now, is that a new thing? Is that where breweries are having live entertainment? I mean, breweries didn't even used to be open to the public until, mm -hmm. what, what yeah. 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, I think it became... Um, a thing for me, it became a thing last summer when COVID uh, restrictions were lifting and uh, breweries are probably reinventing themselves too. And yeah. they started having more uh, music. And uh, so I messaged every brewery you could imagine. And, uh, and that's how I got on that, that train. Yeah. So, okay. You got a little bit of instrumental stuff to play us out. Sure. And I'll talk over top of it. You can listen to CKMS Community Connections with Woody Woodburn doing a live in-studio on-air performance. Thank you very much, Woody. Thank you. CKMS Community Connections is sponsored by Radio Waterloo. Executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Uh, associate producers are Dylan Bravener and Jeff Steger. Steve Todd wrote our opening theme music. My name is Bob Jonkman. We're here every Monday from 11 till noon and Fridays from 3 till 4 p.m. Take us out, Woody. <laughs>